you know, I would just go ahead and just like, you know, read books at a library and just like try to try to understand how, um, you know, photographers that came before me were able to create, you know, iconic images like that. Yo, we're back with another episode of the Black Shutter Podcast. My name is Idris Taleb Solomon, and I'm your host. And today we got Lawrence Ajay, portrait photographer based out of Chicago, man. Uh, welcome to the Black Black Shutter Podcast, bro. How you feeling out there? Man, thank you, brother. Thank you for, you know, being a fan of, of Black Shutter Pod. Um, so I'm honored to be able to, like, to talk to you today. But I'm feeling good, man. Feeling, feeling good. It's, it's uh, um Fall is around the corner, you know, so getting mm -hmm. ready for that. But mm -hmm. overall, overall, I'm blessed. Indeed, indeed, man. So uh, once again, thank you for joining, man. Um, I've been following your work for a bit. And uh, one thing that I really love about your work is uh, how you are able to bring out a certain mood and a certain personality out of the people you photograph. So I would love today if you were able to kind of like we go through some of your images and you kind of like break down a little bit of your process, whether it's uh, the cameras you use or um, certain uh, techniques you you use in conversation to just make people comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, basically um, walk us through how you get the results that you get from some of your images. But for folks who don't really know who you are, why don't you just take a second to just tell us a bit about, you know, who Lawrence Aj is? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a, Photographer, um, but before that, I'm a, a brother, son, cousin, um, a friend for a lot of people. Um, and I'm a photographer, I'm an artist. I love, you know, being able to um, use my gifts and talent and envision that God has, has blessed me with to be able to tell stories. And I'm using it through the medium of photography. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was born and raised in Italy uh, for 17 years. And then I moved to Chicago when I was about 17. So I've been in, in Chicago for 17 years. Um, and and I your, started... family's from, from, your family's from Ghana as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My family's from Ghana. So I'm originally from Ghana, but born and raised in Italy. And now I live here in the United States. Um, so, you know, I, I'm all of these three different. Mm -hmm. places you know into me um but yeah uh you know i started shooting i'll say 2010 it's 2011 that's when like you know my interest for cameras started happening mm -hmm. uh, um i would say that um since i was little i always had an interest on documenting because my parents had collections of cameras and my dad was always recording and, you know, my, my mom was around as well. Um, we were record, my dad would record house parties that we would have in the community, you know? So then once I started seeing my parents doing that, then I was like, oh, like, you know, I want to pick up my dad's camera and do that with my friends around the mm -hmm. neighborhood, you know? So I would say the, you know, the, the love for documenting always been there since I was little. And then when I moved to the States. Um, and I took a photography class in my senior year of high school. That class really opened my eyes to the possibilities of image making. Mm -hmm. um, so then after that, um, I pretty much all, I always had a camera uh, with me that I would use for, um, you know, for documenting, you know, mm -hmm. at first I didn't, I, at first when I started, I wasn't thinking of just doing projects and campaigns and travel and things like that. I just simply wanted to document me on my mm -hmm. friends and then mm -hmm. that turned into what it is now. So that love for documenting, that love and that interest for documenting your friends uh, seems to have like led you into like portrait photography. A lot of your work mm -hmm. is just based on people, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to jump, I'm gonna share my screen real quick and uh, we could jump into, you know, some of your work and, talk about how like your influences from your Ghanaian roots to your Italian upbringing to like being in, in the U.S., like how all of that sort of culminates into the kind of work that you do. So Lawrence, tell us about this image, man. What's going on here? Yeah, so this was shot probably like 10 minutes away from my house. 
Um, but this was me. This is just a personal shoot. I was mm -hmm. inspired to do something with my friend who was the model. Her name is Grace, an incredible model from Chicago. Um, yet I wasn't really thinking anything of it. Like I was just like, yo, if we can, you know, reach out to somebody that has really beautiful clothes, um, uh, why don't we just get some of them and just go to the park and, mm -hmm. um, and just take shots, you know, this is just one of those. Sometimes I try not to like do too many, like super, um, not like sometimes when I do certain shoots, like I have like a big team that helps me. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's, there's, there's real like mind all over the projects and such, but for this one, it was just me and her and the makeup artist. Mm -hmm. You would, you know, I would, I wanted to create something. I felt the need to create something. So yeah, we went to the park down the street from my house and we just started taking shots. And this was one of one that came out, which I really love. Um, kind of gives me like an absolute futuristic vibe. Um, with the clothes, the way she's standing behind it and such. So yeah, that's what it was. Um, you know, it, it wasn't like anything specific. It, it was just mm -hmm. us just having fun. Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was always interesting is like, I think this is a beautiful portrait. It looks like from, from, from the viewer's eye, it looks like it was a planned out shoot. Right. Mm -hmm. And for you. Yeah, in your mind, you're just like, ah, right, this was something simple. It's just going to be three of us, right? Me, uh, makeup artist, and the model. Um, but you, I think you did something here with this very simple setup that really enhances the photo. And it's something that I feel like uh, it takes a while to learn how to do that. It takes mm -hmm. some experience to learn how to go out there with a simple, a small crew and a simple setup and still get something that's really technically sound and technically beautiful you know what i mean mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so you know th one thing that i see is um the color right mm -hmm. you found this dress right um probably wasn't really i don't know were you did you know what clothing she was going to wear or did she kind of show up and get dressed and then you hit the you hit the streets nah we didn't actually and i was the one that went and picked up the clothes mm -hmm. um so i knew that like that was the color but like the location, I just knew that we just, you know, we wanted to do something there because it had this like beautiful, like yeah. statues there, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, looking at the image, you can tell that the color of the, the, the color of the dress, mm -hmm. the, the, the grass, mm -hmm. the trees behind it, kind of just like all go together, you know yeah. what I mean? But that's the, that's the beauty of just like, you know, sometimes not thinking about it too much, but just like creating, cause you just mm -hmm. never know what you're creating, right? Um, you never know what comes out of the image. Exactly. Um, so that's pretty much what I did, you know? So when I, when I got the negatives back and I was going through each negative, I was like, oh, like this worked out perfectly. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because the day before I wasn't thinking about this location, me and the model and the makeup artist, who was also my cousin, we were like, let's just go around the neighborhood and see what mm -hmm. we can find. Yeah. And then this is where we came to. So. Um, you know, sometimes things like that just aligns, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Once it aligns, you just got to stay in it and, and, and execute, you know, whatever you have. Now, did, did you ask her to do this pose or did she just kind of like do that naturally? Like how did this, um, how did this sort of composition come together? As far, as far as the pose, uh, so me and her, we, we, we have a, like a working relationship, so. That was easy. I didn't really, honestly, with this one, I didn't really have to say much. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, yeah, like I directed her at some points, but, um, with her, it was more so like, yo, just do what you do. Like we always mm -hmm. do, you know what I'm saying? Because we have worked together many a times, you know what I mean? So as soon as we, she got there, she knew exactly what to do. She knew what mm -hmm. I like, you know? So, um, once you have a broken relationship with a model, with like somebody yeah. that's not even a model you're shooting up. There's, there's always that understanding right yeah. there, you know? So, yeah. So with this situation, there was already uh, a level of trust between the both of you. For sure. Indeed, For sure. indeed. Yo, sure. beautiful, beautiful image. I love how, I, I love when things work out like that with the dress sort of, like, I don't think the statues are the color of this dress, but the way that it's reflecting, like the grass is reflecting off of it mm -hmm. and the way that shadows are falling, it gives it like the same kind of hue. And it, just, sure. it seems to just work out perfectly. And the contrast 
of her skin against like the white statues in the background just has her skin pop out a little bit more. So yeah. it, it really came together really dope, man. So um, love this Appreciate photo. Appreciate it, man. So again, uh, you do a really good job of like bringing out color and emotion in in, mm-hmm. in, in the people you photograph, man. Like, uh, mm-hmm. tell us what's happening with this image. Yeah, this right here that was for um, a friend's brand called We All We Got, who was like a just like family to me. Mm-hmm. Um, this was shot last year here in Chicago, and yeah, the the young guy, his name is Tofi, the little girl, her name is Indigo. They're like my family, you know what I'm saying? So again, that relationship was already there, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, but I did tell Indigo at that time to like put your hand, put your put your faith on his on his chest because that's her uncle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, you know, I wanted to get that intimate family dynamic into one mm-hmm. image. You know what I mean? Um I, I, I felt I felt like Kofi had that nice face structure, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I told her, like, yo, you can really take it there and be a mom, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so I, I was giving him those kind of energy, giving him those kind of words so he can, like, really get into that mode, you know? Um, but the most surprising thing was Indigo, because, you know, Indigo, mm-hmm. she's little, mm-hmm. but she understood everything that I was telling her, you know? So, like, once I told her to put her face into her, into her chest, she did it right away. I told her to look away. She looked away. He looked mm-hmm. away. So it just came out perfect, you know? So, um, you know, I was just snapping. This time I was using digital. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite images because um, because it's just real. It's, this is how yeah. they are. I, I photographed them in their real way, in their real unique way, you know? It wasn't like, oh, like, it has to be super posing. It wasn't that. Mm-hmm. This is just them every day. Yeah. So, yeah. so the decision for him to be shirtless and for indigo to have on this 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 pattern this beautiful pattern this colorful pattern like how did that come about yeah um that was that was the decision of the stylist um Mm -hmm. who is the owner of the brand Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was his decision which i i agreed with um Mm -hmm. you know we wanted to show the cat we wanted to show the pants the floor pants that he's wearing but also like connected to the Ghanaian roots because Indigo, the little girl, she's wearing a kente yeah. outfit. So we wanted to show, like, you know, this is a Chicago brand. The the owner of the brand is from Ghana. Let's connect Chicago and Ghana together and bring go. this out. Yeah. So again, it's something that is uh, is consistent in your work is your use of color and texture, right? So right now, what I see in this image is this the the red hat yeah uh is is consistent with the red in in the gold's dress mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then what you're doing with texture with is i didn't even realize until you mentioned it the floral pants that he's wearing the floral pants sort yeah. of blend in with this uh this this background mm-hmm. you know and you know I, I I see it here in this image, but I don't think I don't think that way photographically. I don't think mm. about matching certain textures and certain colors together the way that you you're doing here, and it works really well. And so I'm always and I'm always like fascinated when I find photographers doing things that I would never think to do because that's not how my brain works. But it just mm. works really nicely, and and it's it looks really effortless. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm. I love how you blend your textures and your colors, man. It's it's a really Thank cool you, style, man. You're welcome. Thank you, man. Yeah, that, that that one was it wasn't even like um this was just more, you know, I wasn't even thinking about that at that point, honestly. Um it just so happened that it came out like, you know. You know, I, I like feel that. like I feel like there's things that happen uh subconsciously, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That you may it may be a, a natural way that a person thinks or creates that mm-hmm. for them it's just like oh, i wasn't really thinking about it but subconsciously it made sense in their head where somebody else might see that and want to make a different change or you know like i i like for me i i, I like a little bit more contrast right or mm-hmm. um um I, i've been told that i I'm a com- compositionalist or whatever like i try mm-hmm. to make sure everything is almost as perfect as it could be like and mm-hmm. 
So I started looking and paying attention to that. And now I'm paying attention to uh, color and texture and how different artists use that. So, um, yeah, I mean, like you said, you know, it, you weren't even thinking about it, but it just comes together wow. nicely and, and it's consistent. Mm -hmm. Like there's going to be other images I, 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 we're going to talk about. And, and um, I know that you're doing something very similar in those images as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man, really, really well done, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I love the contrast in this image. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the shape of the the musician, you know, the, uh, his hair, the, the 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 trumpet against mm -hmm. like this tech, this this bright textured background. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us about this photo, man. How'd this come about? Um. Oh, this one, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one was for, um, an Apple campaign that I shot in two thousand and twenty. Mm -hmm. Um, they wanted me to document Chicago, um, through the, through the iPhone with the iPhone, um, uh, camera. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to like, see if we can get, um, you know, different parts of the city instead of just being in like me, um, you know, hip hop or rap music all the time. I just wanted, mm -hmm. I just wanted something different. So I knew the jazz was huge in Chicago especially back in the day. So mm -hmm. the, where we shot this was in this neighborhood called Bronzeville. And Bronzeville was known um, for their like jazz scene back in the day. We had, just like Harlem had their own renaissance, we had our renaissance as well with like mm -hmm. black, black uh, musicians, black creatives were in Bronzeville. So this was just me pretty much paying homage to um, that renaissance that happened back in the day mm -hmm. by shooting um, this guy, his name is Sam Trump, an incredible um, musician from Chicago. And um, yeah, this was just us walking around Bronzeville trying to find somewhere interesting, somewhere that like can represent, you know, that parts of the city. Um, and yeah, we just shot it here. You know, this is this definitely one of my, I love this image very much. I remember exactly how cold it was outside. Got it. <laughs> it's crazy. It insane. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so talk to us about this, man. This is a, a mm -hmm. campaign for Apple, right? So, so far, the three photos we shared, the first one you shot film. What camera mm -hmm. did you use on the first one? Uh, the first one was shot with a Pentax 67. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. and then the sec, the second was a digital. What camera do you use for the digital? Uh, R5, Canon R5. Okay, and then this was a, a, a iPhone. iPhone. So three, yeah. three different, three different cameras, right? Mm -hmm, and it's, mm -hmm. it's always funny when uh, I was just at a, a conference last week, and you know there was some pr people presenting their work, and some of the first que like after like these these folks gave like a brilliant presentation, amazing work, beautiful work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The first person that raises their hand is like, "What camera did you use?" And I feel like mm -hmm. that's such a um, when you have an opportunity to speak to artists after they give a presentation and the first question you ask is what camera did you use? It feels like mm -hmm. it's almost minimizing how creative they are, right. how talented right. they are, because they feel like that person was only able to make that image because of the camera that they used. Right. And, right. right. And as opposed to asking like, you know, um, you know, what did you say to this brother to make him play this instrument, you know, against this wall or whatever, right? Like, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I bring that up to say, like, you use three different cameras. So basically, it's all about your vision. You know what I mean? It's all, it's, yeah, it's all about the vision. Yeah, it's all about the vision. The vision you know, and how you're able to execute that mm -hmm. vision through whatever camera that you're using. Mm -hmm. you, could have, you could have the full GTFX 100, but if you don't have vision, then it means that yes, you, you know, it's just not going to come out, you know, what mm -hmm. I'm saying? but when you have that vision, you have that idea and you know exactly how you want the image to look like. I always tell young photographers to train their visualization mm -hmm. because, you know, especially film photographers, because if you're shooting with film, you have to pre-visualize the image in your head first before you click the shutter, right? Because you have, you only get in 10 shots with film, 10 or 12, especially if you shoot it with medium format. So mm -hmm. you have to pre-visualize that image in your head 
after you're done doing that, then you can go ahead and click the shutter. You know? So yeah. once you have that in your head, you know exactly how you want that image to look like. So Absolutely. that's something that I always like to, you know, that's something that I always tell young photographers on the way up, mm -hmm. like definitely work on your pre-visualization, yeah. you know, um, and then, and then that's how, that's how you get to it. Yeah. And if I could, if I could uh, piggyback off of that concept, um, one thing I, I tell young photographers as well is uh, use the camera that you have on you, right? And, and we all have phones and our phones have cameras, right? And I tell them, learn to walk around your, your neighborhood or wherever, just throughout your day and right. take pictures, take pictures with your eyes and your, and your mind. Right. right. Um, right. And you don't actually have to make a physical, take a physical picture. Right. But look at your surroundings and imagine, like you said, visualize, like if you had your camera in that moment, in, in that moment, where would you be, you know, um, who is doing something interesting, right? Like if mm -hmm. people are having a conversation, like, can you tell if they're arguing? Are they telling, mm -hmm. are they laughing? Are they uh, telling a joke, right? Um, mm -hmm. Are they, are they in love, whatever, right? Like pay mm -hmm. attention to um, all these different people's reactions and pay attention to the light, pay attention to traffic, pay attention to the interesting colors you see and textures you see around you so that when you do have your camera, your brain is, a, you already trained your brain to like, recognize these things that you find interesting so it when right. it comes to having to make images you've already done a whole bunch of work without the camera because you're learning how to see your world photographic you know what i mean that's very true now i totally agree man totally yeah. agree and that's something that i used to do a lot when i was starting i would just go outside and i was just like you know anything that i could see i would just take a, i would just take a picture mm -hmm. and i would just like pre-visualize how I would want the picture to look like. I used to do that mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Um, and this is like, this is like pre YouTube mm -hmm. photographers, you know, I would just go ahead and just like, you know, read books at a library and just like try to, try to understand how, um, you know, photographers that came before me were able to create, you know, mm -hmm. iconic images like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Somebody that like one photographer that I learned from a lot when it came to pre-visualization and prints and things like that, when Ansel Adams, mm -hmm. uh, Ansel Adams, you know, he, he talked about a lot about pre-visualization pre um, and he made me understand, understand better on how to like see the image in your head, in your mm -hmm. mind before, you know, actually creating the image, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, he and he, he he would have to set up his shots like for hours, right. like and for wait hours, exactly. and exactly. wait for that sun to hit at the right yeah, exactly. moment to hit the mountain or whatever, right? So mm -hmm. if he if he got his visualization wrong, he just wasted a whole day or two. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Indeed, man. I'm I'm big on that, man. I I I, I I'm riding with you when it comes to pre visualization, mm -hmm. man. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's why. Um, whenever I, I get a new assignment, get a new gig, you know, one of my favorite things to do is go on um, Pinterest and uh, start just gathering images. And uh, mm -hmm. I love I love putting together mood boards. Like if I'm directing Same. something, Same. that that to me is a fun part because um, during the regular days, I don't give myself time to just sit and and look at images um, just for fun. But when mm -hmm. like when it comes time to um, visualize uh, how I want a photo shoot to turn out, then um, I'm on I'm on like Pinterest, I'm on Behance, I'm on Tumblr. all of these uh, Tumblr, right? Mm -hmm. Still um, just grabbing images and putting them together, and then I'm able to kind of take a step back and look at the grid and see For how sure. like the colors match or the tone or the facial expressions or whatever, and um, that to me is like. A fun part because I feel like I just, I just did my homework and and yeah. you know got some, I got some extra credit for it. You know what I mean? Beautiful, beautiful. You know, one thing about um, black folks is that black photographers is that we are gonna get the skin tones right. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and it's always funny because I mean I remember I was in a class and you know this um older white student you know uh, came up to me and was like sort of like whispering like uh, 
how, he was photographing like a, a project on boxing and all, most of the boxers were black. He was like, can I ask you, like, how do you, how do you photograph uh, dark skin tones? And I was just like, you know, I, I didn't really know how to answer that. Right. Because <laughs> I'm photographing based on how I know my, my skin looks and how For my sure. friend's skins look. Right. Um, sure. And it just goes to show you, and it's funny because I think we also know how to light and, and photograph lighter skin tones and white tones because we, we, we're forced to know how to do it, right? Because everything 100%. is, right? Everything is based on their skin tones. Now things are changing. Like I know Google has like some technology that's making sure like um, mm -hmm. camera lenses actually identify darker skin tones so we get it, get to it a little bit more right. But there's yep. something that we yep. also do as far as when we're controlling the light, controlling the situation that allows us to take really good images of darker skinned folks. So I love to, if you could uh, uh, give us some background about this image. Yeah. Yeah. Again, this is one of the most personal, um, work that I did. The beauty about this is that I remember it was, uh, I think it was two years ago, <laughs> beginning of the year, you know, I'm like, I want to get recharged. I want to mm -hmm. do something new, you know, um, she's Ghanaian or uh, mm -hmm. incredible model from Ghana. Um, and I reached out, I was like, Hey, like, I'll, you know, I'm trying to get back into that creative mode. Let's do something together. You know, mm -hmm. there was nothing super crazy planned, you know? Um, you know, it's funny because some of my most favorite shoots were not planned all the way through. It was just, there's just. When the magic is there, it's there. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? There, there, there's nothing that you can, nobody can take that away that magic. When it's there mm -hmm. and you're, you're in sync with that magic, <clears throat> sky's the limit, you know? But that's, that's what happened with her. Um, when she showed up on set and I had my friend style it, I had my boy Mike, you know, helping me with it. You know what I'm saying? She was already beautiful. We had, me and her, we had multiple conversations over the fall. I had sent her a mood board of what we can try to get, try to achieve. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is the image that came out. This is one of the images that came out. I just love how like she was looking straight into the camera. Yeah. You know, this was just, this was naturally lit. There was no like, you know, lights on her left or right. This was just straight natural light in the studio. And this is what came out. Um, Wow, did so, you have yeah. a reflect? Did you have a reflector on on her right side? Like, where how, where's this gold? Where's this gold, gold, this golden was, light coming from? So we shot in this space, big space, big white space, um, and uh, we had and um, I used the the, the window uh, light that was coming mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. um, and then we had this beautiful like backdrop that kind of went with her clothes, yeah. Um, so I, once I started snapping, I'm just like, holy cow, like this is, this is coming out beautiful, yeah. you know? So no, there was no reflector or anything. I love that shadow on her. Yeah. Face. That was beautiful, you know? So like, um, you know, certain, certain things were intentional. I can say mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I told her to like, look straight into the camera. Um, as soon as I saw the shadow, I told her to stay right there, you know? Um, those are just like technical photographers thing. But other than that, man, this was just. Just us having fun for real. So I'm hearing something consistent in, in when I ask like your process of like how you made certain images and you know, um, what the consistency is that you are just, you know, winging it in a sense, you're not, you're not going, you're not having too many, uh, plan, you know, with it, you yeah. kind of just like seeing where it goes and, you know, you can do that when you're, when you're, um, technically sound, right. When you're confident For sure. in, in your work, you can do that. Um, but it sounds like you just go out and you kind of like explore and experiment and, and, mm -hmm. and, and see what you get. And that's a pretty yeah, that's, good thing. That's, that's, yeah. That's exactly what I was doing. Not to cut you off, but that's exactly what I was doing in this moment. And it was the beginning of the year. I wanted to try something new. I wanted to just have fun, you know? Um, so with her, um, this was, this was our first time working together, but we just, act, we just clicked right away. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So like, once we clicked, you know, we were just like, ah, right, let's just, let's just get to it. So 
um yeah again like this was us just having fun seeing what we can come up today Mm -hmm. you know um if it comes out nice it comes out nice if it doesn't hey at least we got together and we were yeah you know what i mean so yeah I mean, how often do you set up a, a, a photo shoot like a personal project and you don't get any good shots? Like, how often does that happen? Oh, it, it has happened multiple times. Um, those, those, those those images will probably will see that it, that it will never probably come out honest. Um, but although, like, I have been going back into my archive, just looking at work, trying to like see what could have went, you know, what mm-hmm. I could have done to make this image better and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, but I'm I'm been I've been where, you know, I would set up something and I'm just like, yeah, no, nah, it's not, you know, we're forcing it. Let's not force it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't like to force things. It has to come natural. You know, the energy has to be natural. The images has to come out natural. You know, because when it's forced, you can see it. You know, yeah. Just, you know, when it's forced, you can like, yeah, like this is there's no there's no energy here. There's no soul here. You know, I want my images to feel like, for one. When you look at my images, like you know this person, or you can feel their energy, you can feel that there's some type of soul in the image. You know, um, when I look at this image, it reminded me. This is gonna be super funny, but I, at that time I was listening to Subject by Do L A, and yeah. the cover Chicago the cover has yeah the cover had like this brownish tone, so I kind of just like inspired this image in a way, yeah. Nice. Um, you said two things, right? You said uh something about um you like your images to have magic and soul. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and something else you just mentioned was that um you don't like things to feel forced, right? And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when I was going through your images earlier, um one thing that I felt was that none of your images felt forced. I was thinking that same exact thing, right? And I was mm-hmm. like, it looks like you're getting genuine people, you know, getting sure. people to give you like a genuine energy, you know? For sure. Um, and that definitely comes through in these, in these images. None, none mm-hmm. of them feel fake. None of them feel like they're doing it for the camera. Um, mm-hmm. But I also feel like you, you said you want people to feel like to know who these people are that you're photographing. But I think that you all, you are also putting your personality into these photos. For sure. For sure. You know? For sure. A hundred percent. And I think, I think, I think when photographers know how to put themselves in, like insert their personality into the photograph, but without making it, making people aware of your personality in the photograph, that makes it even stronger. For sure. It's not, it's not like, Hey, look at me. I'm a cool photographer. It's more like, this is how I see this person. This is what the Mm -hmm. person is giving back to me. This is our Mm -hmm. collaboration. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what I get. So this image I thought was, again, um, you're doing something interesting with color and texture. It's almost mm-hmm. like if I, you, if I could like break it down, it's almost like an equation, right? Like, mm-hmm. like an A plus B equals C type of thing. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. what color will A, what color am I going to mix with B, this texture mm-hmm. to get C, this result. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. When I see this, I'm like, all right, how much of this was planned? Right. I have I had a bunch mm-hmm. of questions. How much of this was planned? Uh yeah. did you know that homie's gonna wear this red uh do rag? If so, did you plan that you wanna be around these red flowers? Like how is it that they match almost perfectly? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with this one definitely that was that was the a lot of decisions with this one. This is a friend of mine. I was a musician. Um mm-hmm. this was shot in LA. Um and yeah, we were just walking around, uh, close to where he lived, um, at the time. And I was like, you know, I remember from being from going to LA a couple of times, I, I would always see this like beautiful roses, these beautiful, like, you know, roses around the city. So I was like, yo, like we need to, we need to like, because of what you're wearing, we need to find that and have that mm-hmm. right next door because it'll look okay. amazing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like. After walking around a couple of blocks, we found one. Um, yes, because of the pants that he was wearing, the red line, the top that he was wearing, the do rag. We were like, "Yo, this is perfect." So then I just started like shooting right there, and mm-hmm. I, I got some of my favorite images from that set. 
Mm-hmm. Um, this was this was shot in film. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, like I just knew that it, it's, the all of the covers would, would work together perfectly. Yeah. And his pose, his pose mm-hmm. looks like is a is a very vulnerable pose. Yeah. You know, and and the angle you're shooting from a low angle, so yep. some interesting, 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 interesting. You're at a low angle. You know, when you photograph somebody from a lower angle, it puts them in a position of power, right? Mm-hmm. Almost mm-hmm. like like uh you you give them some prominence in the image right mm-hmm. they they appear mm-hmm. larger and bigger uh, than they are right but then so you did that from a low angle but then he has this pose that feels really vulnerable mm-hmm. like were these like were these conscious choices that you were making or this this just sort of like happened in the moment as you were making these images i would say some poses were happening in the moment but i did tell him like whatever i have enough feeling right now and that's what we want to get um, through the images, you know what I mean? So I know at the time he was working on a lot of music. Um, you know, he was, he was playing these songs from his up and coming album. So there were a lot of, there were a lot of emotions, a lot of feels, a lot of energy. So I wanted to kind mm-hmm. of show that through the images. So this is the one that came out. Yeah. yeah. Really strong, man. I love the color. It's just, it's, it's like, it just hits you in the face. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. a great way. Even like the red that's coming through on his shirt, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really strong, man. Yep. really strong. Yep. Yep. So when I saw this image, I had, to, you know, I thought about um, other images that I've seen that have furniture like out in the middle of like, uh, like in the middle of a forest or the beach or whatever. And I'm always like, how, like, how do people plan? these these um images with furniture and how do you like organize it and transport it and know exactly mm-hmm. where you're going to put it and, like so um mm-hmm. what was the concept behind this this image i know there's a whole um body of uh work around this dude sitting in this chair but what was the uh the basic premise of this image yeah so this was shot out here in chicago in the south side this was like shot in the hood actually um yeah so he's another musician a close friend of mine from here um, we wanted to just like do something different, you know, like we were like, yo, why don't we go find like a nice vintage couch at like at a prop store and then just bring it to the hood and just like take photographs. You know what I mean? This was for his album cover. Um, but then we just started like shooting images for like his press release mm-hmm. and things like that. So yeah, you know, I had the idea with the couch. I've seen other images that I was inspired by with. Um, mm-hmm. beautiful people sitting on a couch with like a nice chair, you know what I mean? Something interesting, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So to have like this big couch, um, sitting in the middle of just like close to like some houses in the hood in Chicago, um, I felt that it was different, you know, so mm-hmm. we just, that's, that's, you know, me and my friends, I had, a, I had two other friends who, um, uh, you know, pretty much helped me out with that. And we just started like, you know, working through it. Yeah. Nice. And this was naturally lit as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Naturally lit. Yeah. And, and not the like natural sunlight, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, once you, I always say, once you understand how to control light, like in the studio setting, uh, it helps you recognize better quality light when you have right. it. For you sure. know, um, there's times when I'm hanging out with friends and family and they're like, take this picture. And I'm looking around, I'm like, yeah, nah, this ain't yeah. <laughs> this ain't it. Yeah, it. Nah. But they're like, but they don't care because you know, um, they still just want the picture. So, so there's a few, there's different types of people. There's people who just want to capture the moment, and mm-hmm. that's the most important thing. And then there's photographers who are like, I right, yeah, I want to capture the moment, but I also right. want to capture it beautifully, like right, um, right. You know, so um, yeah, when you understand how to control your light and manipulate your light, you can recognize good light when you when you're around it. So you you probably know what time of day is the best time to go out, For you sure. know, to when the when the sun is going to start changing position. Um, if it's an uh, overcast day, you know, like you're mm-hmm. going to get nice even light all around, right? So depending mm-hmm. on what you're looking for, that might be a perfect setting. If you look sure. for something else, it may it may not work, right? So you get to understand the light that you're working with. Yeah. Um, and, uh, how much direction did you have to give him for these photos? Um, that, I definitely have to give him a lot of direction for sure. Um, you know, this, this shot 
is something that I told him to do. You know, like mm-hmm. I had ideas in my head. Um, I was just like, yeah, like I, I was telling pretty much what to do the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he uh, has yeah, a lot of beautiful tattoos. So I was just yeah. like, yeah, I'm gonna just show that. Yeah. The back um, with this beautiful print in the couch. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he had tattoos all over in his, in his head as well. And I kind of wanted to show that as well. You know, mm-hmm. so just to add a little bit more texture to it. So, yeah. yeah. For sure. And how how did you choose this couch? Um, actually, my friend chose the couch. He went to the prop store and he took a picture. and was like, yo, we can use this. This is fire. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. take it. Let's do it. As long as it has character, I'm down. And you had to like use a van to transport it around or, or yeah, a SUV yeah. or something? Yeah, my friend's car. He had a Jeep. We put it in a car, you know, and then we just drove all the way back to the south side. And, um, you know, make sure that, you know, that the shooting was cool and nothing crazy happened. Yeah, I know. And, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then we made it. Cool, cool. And then what do you do with the, the furniture when it's done? Oh, we take it back to the prop store. Oh, you rented it? Yeah, we rented it. Yeah, we rented All it. Right. Makes sense. Okay. When I heard prop store, I was thinking like a, a vintage store or, or something. No, okay, no. that makes sense. Yeah, give it. You yeah. give it back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we All give right. it back. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect, man. Dope shot, man. And when I saw his pose, I felt like um his 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 the upper body, his arms draped over the back of the couch. It felt like you might have um directed him to do that because it just For sure. displays his tattoos and his jewelry mm-hmm. um in a very in a very like natural way, organic way. For sure. For sure. Yeah, man. Uh, well done. The homie, Leon Bridges. Yeah. Leon, yeah, yeah, yeah. This Yo, is, um, yeah, this is my first time literally at Leon. Um, mm-hmm. I have a close friend of mine who was very close with Leon and I knew he was in the city and he was in Chicago. So I was like, yo, mm-hmm. I have to find a way to photograph yeah. Leon Bridges. Um, yeah, he was, he had just got his hair done, but this mm-hmm. hairstylist, um, that I, I linked him up with and then, um, we found this space close to where he got his hair done. I had this backdrop that I just bought at a fabric store and I just started shooting, man. I was just like, yeah, I just want to take some portrait, nothing crazy. You know what I mean? Cause I, you know, musicians like Leon, they do more around fast, you know, they on tour, they have things to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this shot, this shoot was done in like, I would say like 20 minutes. And, and I just told him what to do it. I told him to look into the camera, look mm-hmm. right past. Yeah, mm-hmm. this one. This is one of my favorites. I just love that that sepia black and white tone to mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? I just wanted that classic feel to it. You know, you know. So yeah, it was just one of those where like I had twenty minutes, and mm-hmm. I was like, let's make let's make the most of these twenty um, by by taking this beautiful portrait. Yeah, and um, his hair, mm-hmm. you know, um, gives a lot of personality to this image as well. You mm-hmm. know, the little, uh, I don't know what you call them. Um, so I would say twist. Twist, yeah, the twist, you know, um, really gives some extra personality. And then it it match, it, it goes with the, the texture in the background. Mm-hmm. It's almost like mm-hmm. the, sh- the shapes in the background mimic the shape that his hair is making. You know what I mean? For sure. For and sure. again, again, man, this is, you know, a testament to you putting you know, textures together in interesting ways that just work, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder, so I know you said you had just purchased this fabric. Uh, walk us through your mindset when you go into a fabric store and you're like, cause I was just in a fabric store about two weeks ago, purchasing some stuff for a project. And um, it's so many options in there, um, so many options. And so many. sometimes the way that we see it in the store, it may not look the way we envisioned it when we start to to make images, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. what's your what's your process of you know um, selecting fabrics? Yeah, I would say for me, like, so I already knew that I wanted this images to be black and white. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I was like, I was with one of my friends who was like a mentor of mine, and I was like, let's find like a black and white fabric. Um, you know, because I already knew that I already had a black and white for me. So I was like. This is, these are going to be in black and white. So let's just find something that can go with the black and white. So that, that's my decision all the time. When I go to a mm-hmm. fabric store and I'm buying something, like if I know it, like how 
the image is going to look like, I will find a fabric that has the same mm -hmm. kind of energy to it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So this how it was with um, with these images. The, the the fabric was already black and white. Mm -hmm. um, so then I and and uh, I had asked my friend who was Leah's friend. I was like, "Yo, what is he wearing?" And he told me I was wearing all black. And I was like, "Oh, perfect." Even better. You know what I'm saying? So like, it just worked out perfectly. You know. Nice, solid man. Um, and that. So talk about that a little bit also. Like, how is it that? you knew this dude was in town and you just figured out a way to to get access to to him for a photo shoot like usually when when musicians or celebrities actors whoever are um traveling they have like a pretty tight schedule yeah right yeah. so how, like what was some ways that you were able to uh get in contact with him or the people you need to get in contact with in order to get access to um to photograph him yeah, his his one of his best friends is a, is a good friend of mine. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that connection was there already. But also me and Leon, we have a lot of mutuals that lives in New York. So as soon as mm -hmm. we, we met and we started talking, we were like, oh, like, you know this person? Yeah, I know this person. Like, you know, we have a lot of friends. We know a lot of the same people. You know what I Got mean? It. So that made the connection much, much easier. That made him want to shoot with me even more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, but definitely like having that connections, you know, if it wasn't for my guy, who is Leon's best friend, I don't think the shoe would have. You know mm. what I mean? So, you know, I, he, he had told me what I had told him multiple times, like, yo, the next time Leon is in the city, let me know. We can shoot for like 10, 15 years. It don't got to be nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. Just get some beautiful portraits and let's keep, let keep it moving. So yeah, that's yeah. what happened right there. Yeah. That's dope. And it's also like uh, closed mouths don't get fed. Right? Exactly. Like if you don't. If you don't say anything, if you're like timid, you're like, ah, sometimes, you know, sometimes we self reject. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're like, ah, I'm not going to ask because you're going to say no. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, you got to give the, you got to uh, take the shot and give the mm -hmm. person opportunity to say yes. You know what for I mean? Sure. Don't just, don't for just sure. decide for them. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Nice, man. I'm, I'm glad you got these images. They're, they're dope and um, you get to add them to your archive. Definitely. Definitely. Again, man, uh, color and texture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This this right here feels like an art piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it it feels very intentional. Uh, For sure. You know the composition is very clean. He's almost silhouetted against like the floor. Mm -hmm. Um, tell tell us about this. This looks like it was done in uh in, in Ghana. For sure, definitely done in Ghana, two thousand fourteen. Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, this was shot at this stadium in this town called Jamestown. It was like Jamestown, probably, yeah, yeah. Um, has this? Uh, it's a big stadium called Bookham Stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamestown is known for their boxing um, scene, so I, you know I always wanted to do something there. Uh, and one thing about Jamestown is that they don't just allow anybody to just come into the neighborhood. You have to know people around the neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. so, it took days for me to like get acquainted with people around the neighborhood. Um, and then I was with him, his name is Nana, who knew people around the neighborhood. So we had, we were able to get access inside the stadium to get these images. You know what I mean? So we wanted to do something different. Like, yeah, like it is a stadium. Uh, sometimes they do like they play basketball in there, but mainly mm -hmm. boxing. Um, but we wanted to do something totally opposite. So I was like, yo, do you have like a cowboy hat? Can you wear a suit instead of just like doing something that has that relates to boxing or like basketball, you know? So yeah, he came with the clothes. He's a stylist himself. And I told mm -hmm. him to wear very bright colors because I knew the stadium had this very bright yellow and blue. So I was like, come with some very bright colors and let's just shoot. And this is what came out, man. Um, beautiful beautiful shoot i love this shoot yeah um, man it, it's, there's there's a whole story honestly beyond this shot because uh we almost didn't get the shot because you know we had to wait i would say like at least six seven hours but wow. was, yeah for us to do the shot it was crazy um because we had got there in the morning we first they told us we had access to the stadium then we had to wait for the manager. Then we, the manager had to wait for his boss. Then the boss had to wait for his other boss. So it was like 
it was a whole bunch of combination of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we we were just like, yo, we're not leaving until they say no. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then we were there from 9 a.m. We didn't start shooting until like 4. Wow. You know? Yeah, in the heat. Bring you yeah. hot. It was insane, man. But it was worth it, though. And, you know, it looks like he's sweating through his shirt. 100%. <laughs> and it, it's, so, it's so bizarre, right? Like, to see, like, this... This 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 dark skinned dude with a cowboy hat mm-hmm. in a in an empty gym with a basket with the basketball lines and it's just like what is happening right like yeah. and it's 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 so many questions but it's so interesting and yep. I don't know how much you treat your images um, especially when you shoot film mm-hmm. but the fact that like his complexion is is almost as dark as his pants and the shirt that he has and then you you see his eyes you know um it's like it just adds to like the mystery of of this dude into the scene that's happening Mm -hmm. you know what i Mm -hmm. mean Mm -hmm. 100 percent. really strong man really strong this dude is a boxer nah he's a he's a he's a model Mm. how'd you get how'd you get in contact with how'd you get connected with him uh i I met him through joshua kiss um, Joshua mm-hmm. Kissy is like a big brother of mine. Yeah, and he connected me with him. But we had been friends online and we were always talking of working together. So when I went to Ghana in 2019, we were like, let's just make it happen. Bet. Yeah. Bet. Dope, man. Dope photo, man. Thank you. Yeah, um, I saw in some of your work, um, you had like a, a young boxer. Um, it mm-hmm. looked like you were in Jamestown. I had a feeling that was mm-hmm. Jamestown. Yeah. Um, there's so many boxing gyms down there. But a lot of them, a lot of them, man. The, the boxing scene out there is insane. Um, I, I had a friend of mine who just did like a documentary mm. about the boxing scene in Jamestown. It's beautiful, yeah. Is it uh, is it released or is it? Yeah, it's, it's still YouTube. working. On... It's on oh YouTube. yeah, please share that. Uh, send me that link. I would love to check that out. No doubt, no doubt. I got it. Right. So this yeah. looks like um, a Nike campaign, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so. What's really interesting about this is a lot of the work you showed uh, that we've spoken about so far has been like personal work, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that there's a lot of experience that we gain from doing personal projects. We get to experiment without any consequence. The only consequence would be the amount of money it takes to, 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 you know, to... uh, spend on the film to buy the film sure. and to process the film right um sure. hopefully you're not spending too much money on um you know people that are supporting it right like assistance mm-hmm. or anything like that but um but you get to kind of experiment without any real uh consequences um for sure and you but what happens is you are you're putting in the reps right you're getting nicer at your craft uh but then you're also fine tuning your your voice and your vision Mm-hmm. And I think for many of us who who treat photography as an art, we want to be hired based on our vision, mm-hmm. right? So it looks, this to me feels like your vision just for a campaign, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, how, how closely would you say this resembles your vision as an artist? Uh, it definitely resembles for sure, because um, while we were going through you know, talking to the, uh, to the team, the, the Nike team, um, one thing that they told me is that they want me to shoot this whole campaign, like the way I would shoot my own personal project. So they Beautiful. gave me that creative control, you know what I mean? And so I had that creative control, but I also like, you know, collaborating with the Nike team as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, that's how we were able to create this image and the whole campaign. Um, you know, and when I shoot, when I shoot campaigns, like I'll be shoot it the way I'll be shoot my own stuff. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I, I, I try not to do too much. You know, I just, I would just go ahead with the same mindset. I don't have like a, like, I don't have like a different mindset on how to shoot, um, campaigns. You know, I just go ahead, um, same mindset, same energy, you know what I mean? And then we just make it happen. As long as, you know, the theme that I'm working with are, are fine with the way I do my own work then we can create beautiful stuff, you know? So that's, that's exactly what happened with the Nike one. They gave me the option 
to to choose some of the models um you know the location oh, yeah. yeah location you know i, I just have few creative control so um you know yeah that's you know that's this is one of the ones that came out and yeah i was really happy with the way this whole campaign show came out for sure that's dope man where, where was this taken was this in chicago yeah this is in chicago yeah last year mm -hmm. nice nice and did you it looks like you worked with a uh a set designer for this? Yeah, yeah, there was there was a um, there was this production team. Uh, they mm -hmm. had their own set designer, you know. Um, we had this idea of just like showing, um, you know, it was shot in this factory. So like, you know, you're thinking factory and fl mm -hmm. flowers and mm -hmm. green. You don't you don't think that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, we were able to like try to like get that type of energy in there. So like, you know, um, they had the idea at all. They wanted that to look like. I love that idea. So then they went ahead and created it. So it's like they created a whole new world inside this factory, you know? You know, what's funny hearing you say that is um, some of the earlier images that we, we uh, discussed had some, like had, uh, there's a lot of grass mm -hmm. in your, in your image, grass and like this uh, nature texture at the bottom, right? So the first image of your friend, I think her name is Grace, in Grace. The, uh, had yeah. the grass at the bottom and then uh the the image of uh was named sam the trumpeter mm -hmm. with the black and white there was like mm -hmm. grass at the bottom of that mm -hmm. um and um yeah I, I think i'm noticing like that that uh contrast that you 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 add to mm -hmm. your images like there's mm -hmm. a contrast between especially like photographing like big cities right you have yeah the uh you have like the concrete mechanical part up top and then you have like the soft nature greenery at the bottom and that always gives like a nice contrast for sure, for sure. even with um even with the dude sitting on the uh the couch right like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Th there's a grass there and he's and he's sitting on his vintage couch mm -hmm. right and those things can be considered uh softer you mm -hmm. know elements but then it's like this 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 big brolic dude full of tats sitting on this right so that's the contrast that you you create in that image for as sure. well so for sure yeah man really really good man um, it's also dope that nike includes you in the process to uh select the models and you know have a say in the location and and, mm -hmm. and those things man um it's always great to have a, a feeling of um ownership over the projects that we're, we're working for sure for, for sure 100 percent. 100 percent this I've I've seen this dude before. Yeah, he's he's in New York. He's in New York. Yeah, is yeah. he a, does he does he play piano? You know what? I don't know. Um, I I think I feel like I know what you're talking about. Um, uh, I think you may talk about Benjamin Clement Clementine. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They resemble, right? Yeah, they definitely resemble, especially because okay. they're here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, again, uh, another banger, another nice mixture of texture and color mm -hmm. um but tell us about this this project yeah this was for nordstrom i shot a campaign for nordstrom two years ago um mm -hmm. shot in new york um yeah the, the the texture of the background the clothes that was that was a decision for that the nordstrom had you know um yeah we collaborated together on it um you know it was for a, a brand new line that was coming in at nordstrom you know and yeah, we made it happen. It was a beautiful shoot. It was a fun shoot. I, uh, I loved shooting this campaign. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, I had so much fun with the team at Nostrum. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of my favorite portraits that I took on set. Um, he was, the model was incredible. Um, but as far as like the texture and the, 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 the jacket and the back, the, the backdrop, that was the, uh, the Nostrum idea. They wanted, they wanted to, to get that across. Yeah. So in in a in an image like this for that for uh, Nordstrom as a client, what exactly in this image are are you selling or highlighting mm -hmm. for Nordstrom? Is it just the the whole the way the whole outfit comes together? Yeah, um, the way the, the way the fit comes together, but mainly the jacket. You know, the jacket was the, the that what they wanted to pretty much sell. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, yeah, so I would say the jacket for sure, but. You know, the image as a, as a whole, it looked like an image that I would just take on my own personal, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, it's your personal style for sure. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, you know, I, I'm big on close-ups. I'm big on like very close-up portraits and showing mm -hmm. the person's face, you know? So like, 
This is just one of those. Yeah. So when you do client work, uh, how often are you shooting on film? Um, uh, often, um, I would say like, it depends. Like, um, I can do, I, I guess it depends on the client. Some clients to say, oh, you can do, uh, digital and some clients can say like, yeah, I just do film. I haven't had mm -hmm. a client. I, there was only one time where I shot a whole campaign on film. Um, and that was in London, but then, um, the rest, when it comes to clients is mainly digital. Um, but then the, um, I was trying to like sneak in like my film camera in there and then try to oh, yeah. some for a shot. You know, cause a lot of this campaign work is like very fast and they want, sometimes the client is on set. They want yeah. to be able to see the images right away, you know? So, yeah. What's your preferred method? But definitely film for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. Well, I mean, film just gives a, like your film portraits just give a depth a, a very there's a richness to film you know 100%. um yeah yeah um and uh, it makes sense that you know brands would want you to shoot digital because they need to make this they need to feel comfortable mm -hmm. right like if all of the images are living inside your film canister and they're just like like well, how's it going you're like oh mm -hmm. great but they're like I need to know, I need to see some proof of, of mm -hmm. concept, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I always think it's interesting when clients actually trust the photographers to do that thing in For sure. film. For sure. You know, For sure. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, Andre Wagner. I know like mm -hmm. his whole process is all film. All oh, film, yeah. You yeah. know, um, and that's a lot of trust. Yeah. Our client has to have a lot of trust. And then, um, I mean, I feel like that would be a lot of pressure on me to just sure. do everything in film because anything could go wrong. Right. Anything bad, um, anything. but, uh, yeah, man. And again, another, another, uh, dope image, bro. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. Again, this is yeah, this skin is, tones and color mm -hmm. combinations, man. Talk yeah. about this. Yeah, man. This is, uh, this is essence incredible model um me and her we have a working relationship we've mm -hmm. been working together for years honestly this is for this is for the jordan brand and mm -hmm. this uh, french brand I got the name but um they had a collab um through nurture with like a fashion house near chicago um and yeah this is one where it was just me her essence and the stylist from nurture and um then we that's just the hoodie you got on now right yeah that's yeah the hoodie the, you got on mm -hmm. yeah, yeah okay it's that big up not so. um but yeah man me and me and athens whenever we on set it's just it's, it's all in the mind you know what i'm saying like we there's not much of a conversation we mm -hmm. just know what exactly we're looking for you know she's incredible she's one of my favorite people to work with because i just know that i'm going to get something beautiful from her every single time you know so when we, you know, when we work on this one, I was like, yo, I know how it is now. I go, I'm mm -hmm. clean, I can't say much with you. Let's mm -hmm. just create something beautiful today and let's keep it moving. And that's exactly what we did. So how often do you talk to the people you're photographing? Like, do you, uh, what are some of the techniques you use to just kind of like, uh, you know, set the tone, you know, make folks feel comfortable so that they can give you a, a, a natural you know, image. Yeah. I mean, I, I always, I would say like we have multiple conversations for sure. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Especially for somebody new, we have a lot of conversations because, you know, I'm trying to get to know them. I'm trying to see like, what's their vibe, what's their energy, what things that they like, they don't like, you know? So I, we have multiple conversations and then, um, we get to like, you know, do the shoot, you know what I mean? Um, something that I've learned from, um, Richard Abedin, I have read somewhere where you talked about how, like, um, he would have like hours and hours and hours of time with people that he would shoot and he would spend the last 20 to 30 minutes to do the actual shoot. So then mm. whatever they talked about in their conversation, that's what he was going to show it in their images. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I love that so much, you know, because instead of just like, um, you know, um, the model gets there, the whoever gets there, and then you're shooting right away, mm -hmm. you know? So there's no feel, there's no yeah. soul there, you know? Yeah. So like me, I, I tend to do that a lot when I'm like shooting with a lot, you know, mm -hmm. I, I talk to them a lot. Yeah. 
For sure. And this pose, how does mm-hmm. she land on this pose? Is this something that she sometimes, you know, I know um people will do things when when I'm on set and I'm like, stop, freeze, hold that. Or I would mm-hmm. catch them in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also feel like I would love to get to the point where not only am I able to to grab those moments when they happen organically, but to also mm-hmm. be able to help create those moments. Like, mm-hmm. like to be able, like if I was to try to get a shot like this with, with Essence, Essence, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, would I say like, all right, now act like you were putting your hand, put your hand on your head and, and think about something that made you happy or yeah, think yeah, about, yeah. you know, you know, I, I see photographers who are able to do that to be able mm-hmm. to get people to kind of relax their guard and, and they're, they, and then they land on this pose that just feels super organic. Like what are some things that you do to help get a pose like this? Um, I would say like with, with Ascent's, like it was more just her, honestly, especially in the shoe, you know, there's been other shoes that I've done with her where I would tell exactly what to do. But with mm-hmm. this one, it was more so just like freestyling, you know, and I told mm-hmm. her just like, just move around, you know what I mean? Have some movements into it, you know? Let's not do too much boldly, just have some some movements and then we'll, we'll be able to get the shot that we want. So that's exactly mm-hmm. what happened. But sometimes with Essence, I do like, I do tell her exactly what to do. In certain, mm-hmm. in certain shoots that we have done, I do tell her like what to do, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You ever tell, you ever direct people to like, imagine something, to think of something mm-hmm. like happy or sad? Mm-hmm. Like, what's, what are some of those questions that you ask? I would, the main thing I was just like, what is, what is, what are you thinking about right now? Mm. What is it that is in your mind? Well, like when you woke up this morning, what was the first thing that was on your mind? You know, mm-hmm. try to like, let's, let's try to get that into the images. You know, I, mm-hmm. I don't want the super happy, you know, the senses are, we all have a lot of things happening, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Not, not a lot, but, um, yeah, I'm just like, what are you thinking about how you feeling? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What happened to you this week? What was the last time that you cried? Things like that. Yeah. See, and those are things that I feel like those are great questions, by the way, because those questions force people to to actually stop and think mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. it, right? And mm-hmm. because we go through so many emotions in any given day, right? Uh, the current emotion that somebody might be feeling at that moment might be happy, right? Mm-hmm. You may ask them that question and they go into a smile, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's it that's how they feel in that moment or they may be like damn man, i got these bills to pay and they go into mm-hmm. like a, a state of worry and that's mm-hmm. the, and that's where they're at right mm-hmm. um so I, I like those questions and i hope that you're out there um could think of you know some of your own questions that get people to to kind of reflect on how they feel in the moment because that moment like being in that moment is is, is the, the only thing that matters you know and that's mm-hmm. how we really mm-hmm. get genuine images man for sure for sure Man, when I saw this, you know, it was such a, it's such a simple image, mm-hmm. but again, the colors just, it's almost like the, yeah, it's almost like the images are dressed up as well, if mm. that makes sense. Mm. Right. Mm. Like you have, like, she's dressed up and she's coordinated, man. This is a dope fit, right? Like the skirt, yep. Yep. you know, um, feels like it's from the continent yep. uh, and, and the red. And, and the white in the skirt matches the kicks, but mm-hmm. then there's also like the red and the white in the, in, in the top mm-hmm. and it just all goes together. But then the, the brown backdrop against her skin just feels like, the, it feels like that's all part of the outfit. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. It's really dope, man. Really Thank dope you, use of colors, man. And you know, that's the next thing, like um, when, you know, a few years ago, we weren't, we didn't have access to see a lot of work that was happening around the globe. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, we started getting access to work that photographers on a continent were creating and, and the way we see color, right. The way we see texture, the things that you're doing in your images, right? Like we see things in a way that was never really presented to us. Mm -hmm. And now we get to see like, yo, we can be vibrant, right? In Mm -hmm. our work and Mm -hmm. we can mix and match textures and skin tones and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And that's what to me is really starting to make photography exciting. For sure. You know what I mean? 
because sure. now it's not only limited to the European, the Eurocentric gaze. It's more like you go to the continent, everything is vibrant. Mm-hmm. Everything is vibrant, right? Mm-hmm. And it, just, yeah. it, 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 it shifts from one country to the next, right? The, mm-hmm. the style of it, but everything is vibrant, right? Yep. And the fact that now we have the ability to show that vibrancy in our photos just takes it to another height, man. So I this is one read. of those, man. And I, I think it's dope work, man. I just, I really love how you're using color and texture in your work, man. Definitely inspired. Thank you, man. We're going to head into the last image, bro. Mm-hmm. Again, this feels, it's almost like a sandwich, right? Like the first image you had, like with that green tone happening mm-hmm. in the background and with the clothing. And then it's like, you have this blue tone happening here, right? And yeah. It looks like she's wearing like a a, a black like black leather or yeah. some some material, and that's like a black wall. But whatever mm-hmm. is happening with the light is creating this blue tint, mm-hmm. um, that just makes it feel like it was super planned, right? Yeah. But like, how did how did you how did you um create this image? Yeah, this was shot in London. It was shot for in a fashion magazine called Studio Magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was in collaboration with Bottega, Veneta. So we had a bunch of Bottega clothes that they gave us. Um, yeah, that we were shooting around London. And if you one thing about London, that London light is even every day because it's always, cloudy. always cloudy. <laughs> yeah. Always cloudy. You know what I mean? yeah. So, and I love that. I love that so much because it's not unbalanced. It's just like, yeah. you're, it's going to stay straight even. So yeah. I knew that like, I was going to be fine the whole day because I was shooting outside all day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So by shooting this, um, this was shot against like this black wall in Shoreditch in London. Um, yeah, man, I, you know, she had this beautiful black Bottega trench coat with the Bottega turtleneck. Um, you know, that light was hitting her face perfectly, you know, and then we just started shooting, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to like obviously sell the clothes and see the clothes, see the new line of clothes that were coming out for Bottega. Um, but they always wanted to shoot around London. So mm-hmm. yeah, this is one of those. Yeah. Dope, man. I like how, um, it sounds like you, you, you went to a new city, mm-hmm. different country and did, did the same thing you do back it's home. Yeah. For right. Sure. For sure. Um, so wherever you go, there you are. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, um, I think that's, I think was that for folks out there listening, I think was was so dope about that is basically like lawrence is the same photographer wherever he goes for sure you know and sure. uh you trust in your ability to find interesting locations that match the person mm-hmm. right and you're able to and, and by doing that that gives you the confidence to know like you could land anywhere in the world and walk around for a bit and you'll find that environment that just works and fits for that that person for sure for um sure. so that's elevated seeing, you know what yeah. I mean? That's elevated yeah. seeing, bro. So, yeah. Yeah. um, it's really dope. And it's, it's, um, it's something that, you know, I wouldn't take too lightly. I know for mm-hmm. you, it's like, it just happens that way. Um, it, it feels like it just happens that way for you. Um, but not everybody's able to do that. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can, 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 can go into a situation like that without a plan. Mm-hmm. and come up with some of the images that you've been able to come up with so for sure that's a for that's sure. a skill and that's a talent bro that's a skill and a talent man yeah, indeed and that, man. for sure for sure yo uh lawrence man i appreciate you for for jumping on and and uh sharing some of your work and your insights man it's, it's really beautiful work um definitely going to include all the links where folks can find you um sure. but uh yeah was there anything that you wanted to speak on that i didn't ask you Oh, no, man. We, we spoke on, we spoke on everything, brother. I appreciate Got it. you so much, man. This is, indeed. It, yeah, I'm glad we did this. Indeed, indeed. I appreciate you, man. We'll connect again soon. All right. No doubt, brother. All right, brother. Peace. Peace, man.